Good morning and a warm welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather on this, the first Sunday of Lent, to enter into the Lenten journey with Jesus into the wilderness. And as we gather, we continue to journey uh, claimed in Christ through baptism into service in the world. As we gather, know that our midweek Lenten services are a part of the Midtown Lutheran Parish each Wednesday at noon. It will be on Facebook Live or online at one of the different churches. And this Wednesday, March, um, this Wednesday is uh, the service will be held by Salem Lutheran Church online. And you're welcome to uh, check out Salem Lutheran Church's Facebook page uh, to see that service. We'll also attach it to our Facebook page as well. There's also the Midtown Lutheran Parish Retreat coming up this Saturday and the first Saturday in March. If you'd like to still sign up to attend, it is a Zoom event with Pastor David Daubert. Uh, just call the office and sign up and register for the Midtown Lutheran Parish Retreat. Katie's Cup is having a fundraiser, a pie day fundraiser, so if you'd like to order a pie, you can go to their website or Facebook page uh, to order a pie. If you're interested in participating in the Northern Illinois Synod Congregational Resourcing event uh, coming up in March on the 2nd, Saturday in March, um, uh, you're welcome to call the office and we can get you registered. Next Sunday, a seminarian, Katrina Steingraber, will be preaching and then leading a, a conversation about a Bible study she's going to lead in April on the Psalms. And if you'd like to learn more about the Bible study or help plan or participate uh, in that process, uh, please join us next Sunday also at 1030 here at the Youth Center. You need to let us know you're going to attend, or we can send you the Zoom link to participate that way. You gather now for our worship, and so let us pause and take a moment as we begin with our call to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's ne word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our song is Day by Day.
my day, I know you will provide me strength to serve and wisdom to obey. I will seek your loving will to guide me o'er the paths I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow. I will trust in your enduring grace. Savior, help me bear life's pain and sorrow. Till in glory I behold your face. Oh, Let us pray. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 9, starting with verse 8. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. My God, I put my trust. 
trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me First Sunday of Lent is from Mark chapter 9, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven that said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is our gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Grace and peace to you on the road and journey of life where you are as we gather this day here at Zion Lutheran Church. We know that the road conditions haven't always been very good for people lately, as people have been experiencing a great winter storm in the central and southern parts of our country. Road conditions have been terrible, ice and sleet. There was a news article about a family from Freeport coming back from Texas uh, and how terrible the roads were with all the sleet and ice. Cars out of control, sliding all over the place, many people killed in these car accidents as well. Driving conditions, very frightening. The journey of driving from one place to another in a snowstorm was experienced by me in 1996. It was February and just a little snow was falling. It was a Tuesday and I was driving from Rockford to Woodstock. Uh, every Tuesday was my day off back then when I was serving at Grace and Love's Park and Tammy and I were dating. We'd been dating for several months, and every Tuesday I would go over there on my day off to have dinner with her and her family at her parents' house. But a little snow, I was 25 years younger, I had never been in any kind of snow uh, accident, so I was fearless and I said, I'll be coming over anyways. The snow was falling, probably an inch or so, as I reached closer to the west side of Belvedere. As I was driving closer into Belvedere, past what is now um, the, a restaurant on the left side and there's a Hardy's on the right. Uh, my car began to move, sliding, spinning all the way backwards into the other lane, sliding then into the ditch right in front of Black Hawk Bank. And I stopped there, the ditch being low enough for me not to get turned around, but to be able to actually drive out of the ditch. Got out of the ditch, got back onto Business Route 20, went to that mobile gas station right over there uh, nearby, and I called Tammy on a payphone, which was these devices on the wall where you put money in and you would call people, you know, 25 years ago before cell phones. I told Tammy that uh, I felt like I saw my life flash before me, no cars coming the other way that I even didn't even hit anybody. Uh, and I was grateful, but I didn't want to risk any more by going on these roads and driving to Woodstock. So I said, I think I'm just going to go home. And at the end of the conversation, for the first time, I told Tammy, with my life flashing before me, I love you. My children still to this day know that as we drive by Blackhawk Bank, they know, yeah, that's where you had your accident and you saw your life flash before you. The journey of driving on treacherous roads into the wilderness of our lives as we begin our Lenten journey is led by the Holy Spirit. There are many things that, of course, drive us to getting on the road in life, from going from one place to another. There are advisories about not doing some things. There are challenges about facing the road ahead, as well as looking back and acknowledging the roads we've been on in the past. Our Lenten journey today picks up with Jesus being driven into the wilderness. It's a very short part of the gospel today, and it's not the beginning of his story, nor is it the end. There are many things that have already transpired, and in our gospel today, we see that the wilderness story of Jesus is a part of heading toward the drive to Jerusalem. Today's gospel in Mark is combined with other parts of Jesus' journey. While Matthew and Luke have 11 to 13 verses talking about what happened in these 40 days. For Jesus, for the Mark Gospel, it's only barely a verse. It's coupled with the baptism of Jesus and the Holy Spirit that is driving him into the wilderness. The temptation is just a verse, and the wild beasts, and then the angels that diokinia him. And then at the end of the Gospel lesson today, Jesus is proclaiming the good news in Galilee. John the Baptist has been arrested. But it is the Holy Spirit that drives Jesus out into the wilderness. Now many times when we think of the Holy Spirit, we think of this gentle breeze that blows upon our sails. But today the word for driving Jesus is one of very strong motion. It's where we get the word ball from. It's ekbalo. This casting out is one of force, not just a sweet wind. 
We hear in Matthew 10 that Jesus healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, and cast out demons. In Matthew 21, when he goes into the temple, Jesus went into the temple and cast them all out. Matthew 25, in the parable, the wicked servant is cast out into the outer darkness. Can you imagine? It is indeed today the spirit that is casting Jesus out into the desert. From this wet baptism, he is now out in the wilderness for 40 days. Perhaps Jesus, in this temptation, is coupled with the baptism today because you also understand that Jesus has just heard this incredible proclamation that Jesus is the Son, the Beloved, with whom he is well pleased. This commissioning perhaps creates a conflict for Jesus. The one who has declared who Jesus is is now casting him out into the wilderness, not to be alone, but for some other reason. But this is not a temptation to sin, a temptation to think that he's going to be tempted to do something wrong. This is a testing period in Jesus' ministry. It's like the testing of metal, creating character that will endure the fires. Tempted not by what we cannot do, but what we can do without the power of the Holy Spirit, the temptation is a recognition of not strength, but of weakness. It's one of dealing with Jesus and perhaps this call. Perhaps Jesus, and in our own lives, the stronger we think our faith is, the greater the temptation to think we are doing this on our own. The heart of the deception is not an offer, though, for Jesus or for us to fail, but an offer to rise up. The tempter in the garden didn't ask them, do you wish to be like me, the devil, or do you wish to be like God? No self-respecting evil force would approach a person with the offer of personal and social and professional ruin. They want us to think we can be great on our own. We want to be great again at all costs. Denial of what has happened in the past or an acknowledgement of who we are as a people now. We may want a dream for our future, but we know that it has been a nightmare for others, especially people of color. Jesus is driven out of a place where he depends on himself, but depends on God. When the road is long, the Holy Spirit drives us on, driven to our knees, where we see the angels that serve us, like the ones that served Jesus. God provided for Jesus messengers on the road of testing and temptation, like these angels who serve us, and care for us when we most need it. In the midst of battles with the forces that defy God, we are promised that others will join us to care for us and serve alongside us and minister to us. The temptation is to think you don't need help. You can do this on your own. The temptation, of course, for Jesus ends he is cared for by the angels. And then what's the first thing he does? Jesus goes back to Galilee, hearing about John the Baptist being arrested, a partner in ministry, like Pastor Jane and Pastor Bill. And they have died in the last month. And Jesus hears that John the Baptist has been arrested, and he will die soon too. But in the midst of that, Jesus proclaims the good news that God is here. God is showing up, calling out to them to turn around, repent, see that God is near. They are invited to hear that in the midst of all of life's pains and struggles, God is here. And we, my friends, are invited to turn around again and see that God is here, that God is near. For the greatest temptation is to run from the calling of proclaiming good news to other people, to share the grace of Christ with those around us because we don't think that God is here. And perhaps a great temptation also is to avoid acknowledging our sin, 
both individual and corporately in relationship to human sin, as well as in our experience in the United States of systemic racism that we have been baptized in and not even aware of. The Spirit indeed is driving us to our knees to confess and see that God is near and that only God's grace and mercy can set us free to walk with partners again in ministry, to testify to God's goodness, that God is here, that God is near. The wilderness of our time is to slip and slide on the ice of lives. I pray that we are driven again to our knees to depend not on ourselves, but on God's grace and mercy. For we are called by the Holy Spirit to follow Jesus from the thought through the wilderness to the cross, to confront those forces and powers that got Jesus killed as well, to suffer, to grieve with one another and those who are in pain, to weep with those who are weeping, and in the midst of that, to repent and believe that God is near. And this is how the Spirit drives us to be able to proclaim that good news through song, so today we're going to sing Joyful, Joyful, and I picked this song because of this part of the verse. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, praising thee, their Son above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. God's peace to you as we continue our Lenten journey. Amen. Born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Hear us, O oh God. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's creatures from destruction. Empower the work of biologists, conservationists, and science educators. Lord, we pray especially today for all those impacted by natural disaster and roaring waters and cold temperatures. Keep them in your protection. Hear us, O oh God. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Hear us, O oh God. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer. God, we lift up in prayer, especially today, Miriam Dixon and Amy Nyman and all others who are in need of your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the covenant of baptism, you claim us as beloved children. Nurture us in our baptismal identity and teach us to live within it for the sake of others. Strengthen this congregation's ministries of care and concern. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In baptism, you join us to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness. God, we lift up those saints who have passed before us, especially Pastor Bill Gerber, Connie Bippus, Evelyn Mullen, Pastor Jane, Jane Jansen, and Daniel Thomas, we especially pray for their families. Bring us with them, the saints, to the fullness of your reign. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O oh faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We are grateful for the peace of Christ that sustains us, that guides us, and that unites us. The spirit that drives us back into community. With open hands and hopeful hearts, we gather now if you would participate in the celebration of this holy meal that we are give God thanks and praise for his, the real presence of the Holy One with us wherever we gather throughout the world this weekend. When Jesus gathered with his friends the last time, he took bread and he gave thanks. He gave it to them and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks gave it to them saying, this cup 
is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness, and we have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all, through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing the song, Lead Me, Guide Me. Just 
Go in the peace and mercy of Christ along the way. Amen.